Before we start this video, we just want to take a moment to say thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. It's so important to take care of your mental health. And for me personally, I've struggled with everything from anxiety to even depression. I personally sought out BetterHelp to talk about a lot of my issues and the things I was struggling with before I started Jubilee Media. So I'm a huge, huge, huge proponent of BetterHelp. They'll actually assess your needs by asking you a few questions about yourself, about what you're interested in working on, and then match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can start communicating with them within 48 hours. With BetterHelp, you have access to over 15,000 licensed counselors from all over the world, so you aren't limited to a local area and you can find someone that really suits your needs. They make it really easy and free to change counselors if necessary. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you never have to be sitting in a waiting room or be uncomfortable. It's all done online on the platform. That makes it more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available too. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it is professional counseling done securely online and is available to clients worldwide. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. And of course, we have a special offer for you guys. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash jubileemedia. That's BetterHelp, better, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. We hope you enjoy. The original Spider-Man were not good. Like I grew up watching those and I was not a huge fan. The Toby? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, Toby. What? You, I did what? Not what? Yeah. what? I look back at my fandom since I was tiny. You know, the biggest impact I think for me has been Batman. When people really know comics, they know what you know DC's bringing to the table. I could see how they can defend like their video games and their comics, but I don't know how they're gonna back up the movies. No shade, but their movies aren't that great. Ultimately, you see a very cookie cutter pattern of how Marvel makes their films versus DC, which is super gritty, super dark. I will die on a hill of really apologizing and loving some of these new movies more than most people should. I think my only expectation really is to kind of understand, you know, where the other side's coming from. How do they connect with someone like Superman, who to me has the personality of a brick? My name is Ryan. Uh, I'm a philosophy major at university. I studied art uh, history as well. The more I think about it, those things tie in a lot for the reason why I love comics so much. Hey, I'm Will. I'm a lifelong, I would say comic book fan, but, but really DC Homer, as my friend would call me. An apologist, some would say, to a certain degree. <laughs> so I'm Matt, and I am as well a DC guy. I'm actually trying to get into voice acting and voiceover. Like watching all these animated shows and whatnot, it's really inspiring to see all these characters come to life through voice and whatnot. So that's what I'm trying to do. Hi, I'm Sarah. Marvel's pretty much always been like my favorite genre of movies. I love watching all the movies. I really love cinematography and I love how they're always played out. So yeah, I'm a Marvel fan. I'm Nick and I like Marvel so much that I bought a 3D printer and started printing a bunch of props for it. Oh. So I've got oh, a four yeah. foot Stormbreaker oh, yeah. sitting in my room, oh, yeah. not doing anything. <laughs> I'm Chris. Um, I'm a Marvel fan. Um, I wish I could say super fan. Um, just within the recent years, I've been getting like deep and deeper into it. So there's some things I may not know about, but I'm cultured in Roddy's area, so I can get around. Marvel is only considered better because of the movies. Walk forward if you agree. Unless they're comic book fanatics, I don't hear anybody talking about the comics, let alone the shows, even the games or anything. I only hear the movies. Thank you for being the only one here, by the way. Because <laughs> it is challenging, I think, right now to be a DC fan because of that feeling. Socially, the conversation is Marvel. Oh, yeah. So extremely that every time DC puts out a movie, it's like almost expected that you're supposed to shit on it. Right, right. Because it's not as good. They did it wrong. Now, have they stumbled along the way? Tons of times. Mm -hmm. But I get this feeling that no one's entering into seeing a DC movie to just be vulnerable and experience what they're being given. And that's it's recency bias, right? Because Christopher Reeve with Superman launched, but then you also think about the Batmans with Michael Keaton, right? Mm -hmm. And Jack Nicholson, and, and then even Batman Forever with Val Kilmer. Maybe <laughs> not so much after that, you know, but there was no Marvel movies at the time. The Dark Knight kind of faded into, into the background when people talk about DC movies. And it's mm -hmm. like, those were great films. Awesome. I mean, we don't have the Marvel Cinematic Universe, in my opinion, without Batman Begins. All right, <laughs> disagreeers, come forward. 
I'm still on your side, you guys. <laughs> Did you forget we were here? <laughs> The movies, the TV shows, the video games, the comic books, the books, when you oversimplify it to one aspect, you're immediately erasing thousands of people's hard work and not giving them the credit that they deserve as they add to the rest of the brand. I guess I'm thinking, could you argue that simply because of the MCU, more people care? It used to be that to be a nerd back, even in the 90s, because I love Spider-Man, X-Men, all that stuff from the 90s, doing cosplay when I was doing cosplay, people yelling at me, saying stupid, dressing yeah. up in movies, all kinds of stuff. Now cosplayers get millions of followers like on Instagram. The MCU actually made nerds cool. Yeah. And so when I think of better, I think like, kind of to your point, detracts from all the like suffering of the nerds who got kicked <laughs> and shoved in all the real good yeah. to get here. So I'm now that the MCU right. exists, I'm like, oh, now you want right. to say it's yeah. cool. Okay, fine, yeah. I do believe some of the comics do better than some of the Marvel stuff that is out. Like with all the Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man were not good. Like I grew up watching those and I was not a huge fan. Wait, the 90s? To to the to no, 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 yeah, yeah, Toby. What? I did what? Not what? what? The Sam Raimi? Oh, He's worse than Andrew Garfield? <laughs> I see those movies as like corny perfection. It's like but absolute it's corny. cheese. Like you said, it's corny. Right, I love that. <laughs> he didn't give me that representation. I'm an awkward teen. He was like a very just dark and like brooding, like more DC. He just was very not awkward how I wanted to see Peter Parker. You're telling me that Spider-Man 3 dance wasn't awkward to you? Say, that, <laughs> was, that was. <laughs> Your generation, especially now, you, you can see that you guys don't really like the dark, gritty, because mm -mm. right everyone now, everything wants, that's going on Everyone right now, just wants happy stories. Yeah, everything that's going on right now, you don't want to see even darker. I want the pressure see, personified. See, yeah. <laughs> more, more physical, yeah, exactly. I think DC kind of shows people like, what they already see in humanity. They're the like, wow, are our cities actually like this? Like, is this actually happening? I feel like people kind of get scared and they're like, yeah, I don't want to deal with that. Our characters are more relatable. <laughs> Let's run real quick. It's just the fact that, especially like me growing up, that I could just look at like these different heroes. Like I was like, I'm not built like no Captain America, but I can relate to him in the heart. It's what yeah. matters. And so I'm just like, just, just seeing every character. I'm like, oh, look, that's me. Oh, wait, that, that could be me. Oh, that could be me. And I'm just like, I've just experienced that with Marvel. And that's how I was just like, let me just run up in here real quick. Peter Parker mm -hmm. and his anxiety. It's so relatable as a teenager and seeing another teenager get all these superpowers and he's like, I'm just a kid, like, I'm just trying to go to school, like, I, just, I need a break. It's kind of a combination between the comics, the TV shows, the, the MCU in total. When you humanize a character first and then introduce their abilities, yeah. you not only give the audience time to relate to them and attach themselves to the character, but you give them an opportunity to see them pre, you know, superpower, pre, you know, amazingness. Things like that, you know, just make Marvel just a bit more relatable to me. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. There is an element to DC that I get, that they are unrelatable. <laughs> Superman really is the most obvious, because he's overpowered from yeah. another planet, <laughs> all these things. But at the same time, at the core of all that, is this unbreakable goodness. Like Superman, one of the things I always found really endearing is he comes from a different planet, he has unlimited power, but at the same time, once he met Ma and Pa Kent, you know, he fell in love with like the family and, and being a high schooler and learning how to acclimate. And so at the end of the day, they are dealing with the same human and basic um, problems and conflicts that we have, you know. I think that's where Zack really tried to yeah. tie it all in. It's with uh, Batman vs Superman. PC fans hated. Mm -hmm. They were not about it. And it's just like, don't worry, we did too. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone hated it. Yeah. Exactly. People were not a fan of it, but it's just like he tried to humanize these characters, yeah. and that's. Mm -hmm. That's that was really an important step to take because the Superman Batman they were never shown to have a breaking point or yeah. be yeah. be they showed up as the villain. Fallible too, yeah. yeah. But also going back to representation and relatability, like you know, Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Not many Asian uh, superheroes, but you know, with Shang Tsung and all these other characters, I would give props to Marvel. And as long as it's not forced, you know, right. like shoved down people's. That's right. what I. That's yeah. what I really don't like. But as long as it's not shoved down people's throats and like you're gonna have to digest this, yeah. then I'm all for it. When you guys did bring on Peter Parker and mm -hmm. um, Spider-Man with that, me uh, being from New York, and so I was just like, mm -hmm. I see him and I see me. But at the time, I was like, oh, you know what? I want to go to this college too, and I want to go here, and I want to do that. And I'm like, you know what? Hopefully, do get bit by a spider on the way there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, cool. I genuinely, as a kid, and like having what it felt like my own superhero backstory, was like losing a parent at a young age. 
be, being kind of a caretaker to her, my mom, when I was 15, and still losing that person, it rewired in my brain many things, one of which was take care of other people and put yourself second, put everybody else first. Two, never show the crack in that it's actually crippling you trying to be perfect. Because I did always try to say like, mm -mm, when you see me, you're gonna be like, how does he just fly through life? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was healthy, wasn't. And then once I realized that I actually could be vulnerable, I could be broken, and that being broken is more beautiful and, and makes you more powerful, that sort of opened up the, the, the floodgates of finding those things in the DC characters. And I think the writers, especially now in comics, are going that route. My fan community can be toxic. Do you want to talk about a no-brainer question? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think we can all agree that every fan community right. can be toxic. Every, I mean, yeah. even if it's something as simple as, you know, someone's title changing mm -hmm. or someone becoming a new hero. You immediately get the people on Twitter just being like, I hate this person. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel really bad for Brie Larson because mm -hmm. she got the brunt of it during that whole Captain Marvel phase. And personally, I liked her. I think she's a great actress. Yeah, I, I think really she's. I don't understand what the problem is. I don't either. I'm not a big fan of the character, but I was like, this is fun. I don't want to know what Exactly. Hate her so it's much. like when you dehumanize the actor and treat them as they're only that, right. that, that's not being a fan. Yeah. That's being an ass. I remember when Black Panther came out, a lot of people refused to see it because they called, they said, it's a PC movie. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like there's so much vitriol in different corners. I like to believe it's not most people, but like, the loudest voices on social media are like always, the always the yeah, yeah, exactly. Always. Because those are the ones that get attention. Right. Yeah, even the, the Black Panther, anything like this is supposed to be a black Superman coming out and people yeah. are going to be yeah, like, oh yeah, that. yeah, that's born of the political correctness. Political but correct. I'm, there's, there's been iterations of yeah. black well, Superman. Also, it's comic books, so why not? Yeah, like, it's like, it's not only, it's not only limited to just white people. And there's like a multiverse for a reason. Yeah, it's <laughs> a multiverse, exactly. Well, I get toxicity on my end just for being a girl. And yeah. like oh, you guys are oh, predominantly, I, <laughs> I mean, oh, it's all God. males, yeah. but I mean, I've never been like directly targeted at, but I definitely do get the sense of like, oh, you're female. You don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. Oh, you're younger. You have no idea what you're talking about. I really probably could have came with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only reason why I didn't was because it was prefaced by saying my community. I just, I'm not on Twitter, I'm not on Instagram. And so I don't, I'm, I'm ignorant to it, I guess is what it is. I had a weird situation. You know, I would be, I guess, more in the jock category growing up in the sense of that was more, more my reputation, I would suppose. But anyone who knew me and any of my friends came over to my house, like when I started dating, like in high school and the girls came over to my house, I had action figures everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so the jig was up, you know yeah. what I mean? And like, you know, this is really who I am and what I'm really about. And, and I always found, I got a great reaction from that. I think if, if people buy too much into the, the, the toxic nature of, of Marvel versus DC or whatever the movie is and their gripes on it, they're losing a chance to focus on the positive of the character and why they love it. My side would win in a fight. <laughs> I'm walking, I'm going for it. Yeah. Oh, wow, they, 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 they know too. They, they know. <laughs> it's good, they know, they know what's up. They know this place. I think that's why the, the conversation is, is, is Marvel connects more with like the real person because DC does feel like titans, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And to me, comic books are American mythology. I heard that somewhere in a documentary and it's true. You know, we don't have like an American mythos outside of like Paul Bunyan and like some silly stuff. It's superheroes is yeah. really what it is. Yeah. And Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, these like, you know, Atlas holding the world on their shoulders figures. So it's like, it's always them. Batman's like plan to defeat everyone is just, I'm Batman. Yeah. And everyone on earth goes, he's right. Yeah, get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we're gonna get down to the, to the brass of it, you know, a pissed off Superman, good luck. Someone, <laughs> so, so, someone taking out the big dog, you know? I always see these videos on YouTube, like, oh yeah, Superman versus Hulk, or Batman versus Iron Man. And it's like, it's all made up. People have their own uh, And listen, until Superman fights Goku, we know that's the real <laughs> See, we're not all delusional. <laughs> I mean, this isn't even a question. <laughs> like, the Justice League is way overpowered. <laughs> like, way overpowered. Right. I would just say their brutality is a lot more severe compared to Marvel characters. That was like the only thing that came to mind. I was saying the MCU is a little bit more light and fluffy, so they have a little bit more humanistic like thoughts, um, and I just feel like they would completely just destroy them, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I guess my only question would be, you know, if you want to pit one person against another person, you know, mm -hmm. 
the whole argument that I hear a lot with you know DC fans is Batman with prep time. With prep time. Yeah. Yeah. Always wins. What is that argument? <laughs> because he's just the dude. <laughs> I've never made that argument because honestly, the argument is usually he's already had the prep time. Okay. Yeah. That's always the twist. Is so you just like, assume he's already figured it Batman's out. Batman's prepared for every pot. Like yeah. his mind is like I've calculated 17 he's million to be outcomes. Prepared, yeah. Like if he's they, Doctor Strange essentially. He's Doctor Strange. The time. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, okay. if they were together in a movie, and Doctor Strange was like, I saw these outcomes. He'd be like, Yeah, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> and as a reader too, not just a viewer, I do get bored of that. You know what I mean? Because then there's almost no stakes. It's just like Batman knew all along. I was like, oh cool, so it wasn't even, it didn't even matter, you know? What I liked about Infinity War and the Snyder Cut was the level of dread you felt for the characters yeah. and what they were having to go through in order to get to their goal. And their goal was not ultimately met, especially with Infinity I got so emotional at Infinity War and my head literally hurt after watching that. <laughs> like a lot, having the character be, characters be vulnerable, yeah. like not having them at their peak. Mm -hmm is very important for the audience to be able to relate and to be able to feel for the characters. Right. Martin Scorsese said, Marvel movies are not cinema. Step forward if you agree. Now step forward if you disagree. Well, what does he know about making movies? <laughs> right? I think we all are going to disagree pretty heavy with that one. If you look at not just the numbers and not just the worldwide success, but also the stories and the emotions and the ebb and flow of, of the storytelling, I think they're definitely not only cinematic, but some of the best examples of art that a worldwide audience of different ages and a lot of different people can come together and watch and enjoy, you know, or maybe sometimes a more boutique or arty film yeah. might not have that same you know, response. Yeah. I think the second you try to put ground rules on what art is, you fundamentally don't understand. You're missing the point of art. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Like, how do you define cinema? Right. You can't. Right. There's no you know, cookie cutter definition of, oh, okay, this movie is cinema, but like Shrek 2 is not. Like, it's, it's <laughs> high cinema. High cinema. cinema. <laughs> but it's, it's that type of thing where if you decide that things have limits, you're already not only limiting the audience, but you're limiting creative freedom. You know, if someone comes along and says, oh, that's not cinema, what are you telling the future filmmakers? That what they want to do is yeah. not considered mm -hmm. cinema? Right. You're immediately you know, trashing what these new people want to do. It brings people together is yeah. the biggest thing. I think a cinema can do that. Yeah, here we yeah. go. <laughs> uh, I mean, me and my dad watch it together. Me and my mom, me and my friends, and we're all different ages. Mm -hmm. That's like the point of cinema, mm -hmm. so. Oh,